Good morning, beloved. I'm so glad to see you today. I hope you're having a good day today. And thank you for setting aside this time for us to chat together for a few moments. Last night, I saw a commercial for a company. I think it was called Imperfect Foods or something like that. But the idea behind this company is that they take all of the imperfect fruits and vegetables and other grocery products. It might be apples that are misshapen or crackers that are broken or um, something that has a tiny spot on it, but foods that are t perfectly edible and nutritious and good for us, but uh, that others have rejected because they are not perfect. And um, to keep us from just rejecting and throwing away tons and tons and tons of food that could be feeding people, but we have rejected it because it isn't perfect. I think that's a great company. And um, I, it made me think about one of the most troubling verses in the Bible to me. Um, it's in Jesus' Sermon on the Mount in Matthew chapter 5, verse 48, where Jesus says, Be therefore perfect, as my Father in heaven is perfect. Well, who can live up to that standard? And I, I think that we often uh, fall into the sin of perfectionism, of thinking that we are not enough, that we are so imperfect that we cannot be loved, that we, um, and we don't love ourselves because of our imperfections. And uh, we have, I've noticed that we've gotten into a habit as a culture of pointing out every imperfection in others, our elected leaders, our church leaders, our uh, celebrities, our, um, uh, you name it. We, we like to find the imperfections in others and uh, blow those up into such negative things that the person or the organization uh, cannot possibly be believed or have value or um, be seen in the totality of who they are because of that perceived imperfection. We love to do that and uh, psychologists tell us that when we do that, what we are actually doing is projecting our um, concerns about our own imperfections and we see it in others and we reject that because we don't want to accept the imperfections in ourselves. So what is Jesus saying when he says, be therefore perfect as my Father in heaven is perfect? Well, in ancient Galilee, in the Aramaic language, perfect did not mean uh, what we take it to mean today. It did not mean um, the total lack of imperfections. It didn't mean uh, lacking in something. It meant, meant whole, as in um, perfect in that everything necessary is there. And um, I want to encourage us to, to hear Jesus saying to us what his desire for each one of us is, what our goal in life and in our own being should be, is to be perfect in that way, to be whole, to become whole, whole in um, reflecting the image of God within us, whole in the um, uh, creation of uh, and, perfect, and perfecting of all the talents and the gifts we have within us, whole in terms of love, especially. When Jesus talked about perfection, he was talking about being perfected in love, in becoming a holy, totally, completely loving person, knowing, uh, and, and that comes from knowing that we are perfectly loved by God and growing in our spiritual uh, life enough to be able to perfectly love God 
ourselves and others. That, that is Jesus' greatest commandments, right? Uh, love God and love your neighbor as you love yourself and to do so perfectly, wholly, completely. That's the work of a lifetime. It's what John Wesley called going on to perfection. That is a, a big part of uh, Methodist theology and understanding is that we are never just um, saved one day and that's it. We are being saved every day through the work of the Holy Spirit within us, perfecting us in love. And um, because we know that God is at work within us, we can hope to become uh, perfected in love, either in this lifetime or in the life to come. As we are in this season of the Holy Spirit, it's a wonderful thing to remember that that's one of the um, most important things that the Holy Spirit does. It is the work of the Holy Spirit to perfect us in love. And we um, cooperate with the Spirit in uh, growing in love, in growing in our spiritual gifts, in growing in our relationship with God. I read a, a meditation by Father Richard Rohr yesterday, and he was talking about this as well. And he says, wholeness and love are inseparable. In the words of Ilya Delio, our challenge today is to trust the power of love at the heart of life, to let ourselves be seized by love, to create and invent ways for love to evolve into a global wholeness of unity, compassion, justice, and peacemaking. This is living wholeness and love. That's what Father Richard Rohr says. But I know that the perfectionistic instincts within us sometimes makes us impatient for that perfecting work to happen within us, or at least it does for me. I want to be made perfect in love right now. <laughs> I don't want to um, perfect that uh, patience within me and wait for the full fruition of that uh, perfecting love within me. And sometimes I'm not patient enough for it to uh, come to pass in others as well. So there is a symbiotic relationship between perfection and patience because this work of love that God does within us is the work of our lifetimes. It doesn't happen instantly. It doesn't happen in a year. It happens from the moment we are born to the moment that we are born to eternal life. And um, as the more patient we are to begin to look for any signs of that growth in love that are happening within us, the more we are able to work with the Holy Spirit to keep growing those and to keep hoping and uh, trusting that God is at work in you and me always for our good and for the kingdom and for the good of the world. So be patient, beloved, and cooperate with the Holy Spirit in finding ways that you can grow in love and grow toward being whole, complete, perfected in love. I'm going to close with the prayer that Father Rohr um, shared with us. Loving God, you fill all things with a fullness and hope that we can never comprehend. Thank you for leading us into a time where more of reality is being unveiled for all to see. We pray that you will take away our natural temptation for cynicism, denial, fear, and despair. Help us have the courage to awaken to greater truth, greater humility, and greater care for one another. May we place our hope in what matters and what lasts, trusting in your eternal presence and love. Listen to our heart's longings for the healing of our suffering world. Please continue to perfect the world and ourselves in love. 
Knowing, good God, you are hearing us better than we are speaking. We offer these prayers in all the holy names of God. Amen. I'll see you soon.